Uh, greetings again from the American Orthodontic Society. This is Dr. Bill Wyatt, and I'm going to discuss again in another short video things that we used in doing the cases that you see here. And uh, this is interesting, and maybe it's interesting to you if you haven't learned how to use some of these things. If you're a regular orthodontist, then maybe this may be old hat, and you can just go on to the next <laughs> next deal. All right. So let's. Um, I've gone through part of this on the first uh, one of these videos on things we use and uh, aids and doing orthodontics. And uh, this one I'm going to start off with is separators, and uh, I'll try to uh, show you what. And there are various things that you can use with separators. Now, <clears throat> I've been doing orthodontics for years and years now, and we started out separating the teeth with uh, brass wire. I'll show you that, but you don't uh, you probably won't ever have to do that, but you might want to know how to do it. And now the separators come out on little stems of uh, deal that uh, actually let me get this little pin going again here but uh, this is just a plastic a, a stretching type plastic and you can just hook your dental floss into this and pull these off of here and we'll pop them between the teeth uh, and separate the teeth where we're going to put bands on the teeth you just have to separate them and then there are other things that you can do with separators that are more interesting and a lot of people don't uh, realize what you can do and then how we make a space between the teeth to move the jaw forward sometimes uh, so let's do with the separators first i'm going to just take a uh, well, we got started here and something went haywire. I'm going to pause this for a minute. Sorry for that delay. Uh, what do we do here? I'm going to show you how we actually pull these things off of this uh, material that's uh, very elastic. And it's a plastic material, but it stretches quite a bit. Uh, now we take a piece of dental floss and go in to the loop on here and just pull it and it'll pop loose from there. And then you take a dental floss and go in from this side of it, and you've got the, the little O-ring here on the de dental floss coming off of both ends of it. Now there we come in with the dental floss and hook it this like that, like this. And this is the way we get the separator between the teeth. We take this, pull this out tight, and go down, and you run the dental floss between the teeth and you slide it under the contact point, like you, you've got a molar here, and you've got another one coming up like that, and you start in with a dental floss down here, and then you get the separator in between, and you stretch it out, and you've got one side of it, you can see it on either side, and then you pull this wire up through here, and then the separator is right in between the teeth like that. And you leave it in there and it'll move the teeth apart. And you come back a few days later, if you're going to band these teeth, you have to have space in here. And that's the way we put the separators in. You pop, pop the dental floss down through the t contact points and then pull on it. And if you were looking at it from the side, say something like this, the, the 
separator would come right in between the two. Then you pull it up and you get it to pop in so that you don't separate up here and go around and down at the bottom of the contact. This is if we were looking at the teeth from the side. So the separator is spread out in between the two teeth on top and the bottom. Now sometimes you um, pull, pull on the dental floss trying to pop the separator up between the teeth and you'll pull too hard and it'll pop through there and then it'll shoot uh, right. Sometimes it'll throw saliva in your eyes so you have to watch doing that. You pull it up real easy and kind of jiggle it back and forth and you'll pop that separator down between the teeth. Maybe I've got a picture of that. I don't think I do. But that's the way we separate the teeth most of the time. Uh, I will come, I think I have some other things about separators later. Now, we have gone over how we have the, ba the molars banded on the previous video. And here we've got a conventional round arch wire in here with an omega like that. And this arch wire here, it comes out as a spring, goes around like that. And it is an intruding wire. And it would go down this way. You raise this wire up right here. This is a heavier wire. A lot of times I prefer to do this with a rectangular wire and you hook that on the front teeth out here and you can open anybody's bite. I don't care how old they are or how deep the bite. It can be completely there and you, you, sometimes you can't get uh, the teeth down over this so you have to put a bite plate in here and you can open the bite on anybody on it like that and we covered that in the other deal. Now these are the teeth right here that we've got the brackets on and we're going to show you how we put uh, sealant on that and we tie this uh, arch wire back. You've got a, a device in here that's kind of sharp and kind of uh, runs down and it comes out like this and you push on that and you pull on this wire and that wire we're tie wire in here is an O one two or twelve thousandths and the ones you ligature if you ligature the teeth it'll be a ten thousandths O one O ten thousandths uh, slightly smaller but it fits around the teeth good enough and you can pull the arch wire down into the bracket slot with that. Now let's uh, go on to see what we have here. Now there we are, we're going to pull that off and we pop it off like that. We put the other floss in there. Slip the floss down between the teeth. Don't start up here with this and try to get it in. That's just, uh, it just won't go much and you break the thing pulling it down. And we've already banded one side of this. So we're coming back to put a band on this tooth right here. And so we have to pop down in here between the floss. And now we'll pull this thing through and get it where the, uh, the separator is down below the contact point. I think I showed you that a minute ago here. Uh, the separator would be down in this area and pop in here both sides and then slide one side up there so you end up with a separator over the bottom or it's just making a circle around in that contact point and leave it in there for several days um, and that separates the teeth. I've never, you, know, you, you push them apart and leave them through days and come back you can take the separators out and uh, Slip the bands down in there. Well, that's the way we banded these, where we had to band every tooth, we had to separate every tooth. And that is a painful part of the orthodontics. Putting brackets on is so much better. I can give you about 
20 to 30 reasons why I use brackets instead of bands. But I put bands on the six and the, the six year molar and bands on the second molar. Uh, usually, we put them on the six year molar for sure. We might put a bracket on the second molar. It's not as, uh, as important back there as we could get in that. Now let's, uh, by the way, we put these hooks on the, in, the mesial lingual side and put one of those little rubber bands around that to keep it from rubbing the tongue. And that's what we hook the elastics to on the inside. All right, <coughs> now we're going to pull that up there and we're going to put some force on it and we stretch that thing out and slide it through completely on the bottom and then raise this up and hope you can keep one side up above and the other side down below. So when you slip the floss out of that, the, uh, let's see if I do that, and we slip the floss out. Now the separator is around the contact point on the teeth. Now, uh, <coughs> A lot of people are not aware of this, but you can put these separators in, say you're getting a second molar coming in back here, and it may be, uh, say you've got a six-year molar or something like this, and your second molar is set, sitting in here or something like that. And, you, and it's kind of hung up in there, it's not sliding up. You can slide, and the tissue is over this. You slide the floss on the string down underneath here, pull the separator through the bottom, slip it up here, and you can feel it when it pops over the top. And you get it over there, you leave that on there for about a week. And this will tooth will back away. Then you slide it out, and you'll have a gap in here, and this tooth. A lot of times if hitting at an angle, it'll come on up. Otherwise, you're going to have to come in here and, and upright that tooth, which is possible. We'll take, a, take the surgeon and cover part of it and put a tube on it and then put this uh, spring on it that you go out here and raise this tooth out of there. Uh, and you can upright any tooth. Not a, I never found one you couldn't do that. And you can do a lot of them by just popping the separator in if it doesn't like much. You back it up and then it'll hit at a higher angle on the tooth in front of it and usually come in, come out. Now here's a person running that the separators in over here. And if we were going to band it, we'd put a separator in this area too right here. Now here is a a, a six-year molar and it's banded and this tooth is trying the second molar to come in but it's held up in here and so this is the one and the tissue is over this so you load your separator up and slip the dental floss down between here and you can feel when you're down in this area then you pull on it going to the buckle and your separator slides through and you can feel the separator stretched out on both sides and pop it up and try to get the separator to stay in there and that will push this tooth back about this much and the tooth will tend to come on up like that. So I brought a mini second molar or third molar or whatever you did with like that in by just actually popping a separator down in between there and it takes a little practice for you to learn how to do that and we've got a wisdom to here that's hopelessly impacted the bone structure going up there they never will be able to get it out you can see this old surgeon can take this thing out uh, and then this will come up easier but it doesn't matter if you got this wisdom tooth down if you put a, a tube in here and you come in here with a spring and you come out and you raise that up, it'll shove that wisdom tooth back and come on up in there and actually have a space in between the two right there. So 
to learn how to use these separators and they do a good job for you. Now, that's, uh, we've got this tooth is a kind of tilted back here, so we've popped that floss through down at the bottom and now we're going to try to pull it up through there. And this is the floss we've got it coming out here and we're pulling out it over here and we pop it up and it gets between the two teeth and it'll shove this uninterrupted tooth back and help it make a better angle to come on up in the mouth. And so learn how to use separators. It, when I mentioned separators, a lot of you think, well, that's silly. Anybody knows how to use separators. But anybody doesn't know how to use them. They just don't. They don't really realize the things you can do with separators. Now, this is what we used several years ago. We bought a rule of glass wire, 25 gauge glass wire, and you would take it and wrap it around. This way you used to sterilize the needles in a steel shaft like that. Wrap that wire around that uh, steel shaft, pull it off of there, and it looks like that. Then you take a pair of shears, and you come in there and you just see whether it just cuts them in two, and it flattens them out to some extent. Brass is soft, and you just whack that thing in two, and now you've got a lot of little brass circles. You take this brass circle and mash it with a pair of pliers, and you flatten the end of it out, and then this flattened end, you cut it at an angle like that, and you'll have a point on this. And now you can actually thread that through tissue. You can sew somebody up with those things. And you, I got stuck in a, we raised cows here on the ranch, and I've had a mother cow lost her. They, they pulled the calf and they put it out and the vet told me just push it back in and sew it back up. I said, well, don't have anything but haywire. And I took haywire and made these needles like this and sewed that cow up. And it, uh, the cow lived, and, but she needed to come back to get the stitches taken out. <laughs> but uh, that is what we use to separate the teeth. You put it on a, a pair of, you know, pliers and where you point it at, like you can hold it solid like that. And you take that, you bend this back and you take this and run it down in between the teeth, kind of like that. Then you bring this, this part over and take them and twist them down like this. And you twist on that horn and it separates the teeth, and you can put, you could take this and go in under that tooth that was uh, slightly impacted, you know, with a tooth coming in, something like that, and you could slide this, you can go through the tissue if you want to numb the tissue with it. You don't have to sterilize the thing, you can come in right through there and twist it down and push that tooth back with this brass separator. So that's another way to separate the teeth. Now uh, we twist that wire, cut it off, push it in where you will be pulling on it, and you get them back and pull those up, cut them, take them off, and you've got space between the teeth where you can put the bands. You used to have to band every tooth in the head, you know, to do the uh, orthodontics properly. So hopefully you won't have to go back to that. These uh, soft separators are much better. And now there's another one that's even better than that. Well, I've found you, you can buy these at certain, you know, so it's a spring-like device. And you take this spring and you think you'd put your plier in here, but you don't. You put the plier right on the bottom edge of this. You sit this loop right here on the tube like the tooth will be, be coming in like, like this. And you put it up here and mash on that, and it'll separate there, pull this down. 
and now you see down underneath the bottom. And then it comes, goes under, and then it pushes up here. And then you just leave it alone and it pushes pressure and it'll separate the teeth that way. Then you come in and catch it from the top and you kind of press down on it. You can just slide this thing out. And if you want to sterilize them, you can use these things over and over again. I've, I've never had one of them just come out in the mouth. They separate the teeth and they stay there. And so those are little wire spraying separators. And there's places to buy them. Uh, I'm not selling them, but I'm just telling you about it. Now that's one of them. Just remember you put your fire, small fire like that, and you take this, put it on top of that too. In other words, do something like that, and this space is down here. You put this, this loop up here, and you press, you pull out, pull this one down, and slide it underneath there, like that. Now those are darn good separators, and you can use them over and over again if you sterilize them back there. I've never lost one. <coughs> now, separators are something that we use to go between the teeth in a lot of situations, uh, and we want to make a flat contact point and now the only, this used to be a company Horico, and we could get an eight millimeter separator and just get the fine kind. You don't need the all those and get some double sided and single sided grip on this, this piece right here. You can cut this up in about three pieces and uh, it'll, you can use that in these short pieces like that. Now, <coughs> you wonder where you use these separators. And this is a, you use the fine only. Just the fine, you get the separator. This is a grit that you can slide between the teeth and strip the teeth with that. Now, in cases, where you have a little tight problem in the lower anterior teeth, you can run these separators in at an angle like spokes in a wagon wheel and run them down through there and through here and through here. And that makes a flat surface on these teeth. And you go, you've got one, two, three, four, five, six spaces to go through and that has a 12 sides of teeth that you trim down like that. Now, when you come back now, you're gonna pull these teeth together. And by the way, these are those little brackets. I, I recommend people starting out use the one with the wings because you can pull these wings, they're soft. You can put a sharp something between there and twist it and it'll push this wing up it'll turn that tooth in that direction. So uh, use those. Uh, if you get going and you get good at it, you can just get this little single pin bracket. That's all you need. You know? And I use a long Ross uh, the, the uh, torch and tip and stuff in the Ross brackets. Uh, not that, that's, that that's, he's got no any secret about it. Now, back to flattening these spots out. I'm going to have to erase, I don't think that, no, I'm going to show that again. Now, I'm going to erase that. If you take these teeth like this, I'm going to have to get a, something and show you how to do it. You've got teeth that are coming in contact like, like this. Now, if we run between here, we're going to flatten that surface of that tooth. It'll be flattened out right here. 
and it flattens this tooth too. And then you pull the two flat surfaces together and then for the tooth to slip over that, it's got to slide all the way out to the end of the flat surface. I was over in Scotland years ago and there was a bridge going over a river running underneath here. And these were just stones put in here. And those stones were put and they were wired wider up here. And they put these stones in there and they had this same angle on the stone. And if your pressure puts them together and that holds up. While I was watching this, a bus drove across that, that bridge. There was no metal in it at all. And it held that bus up to those stones with that field. So we take that same principle and use that on lower anterior teeth that are, tend to slide past one another. They have to slide a good ways before they can go past. And if you keep them lined up like that and tighten them up, you can have teeth that are very tight down here that stay in line. Uh, the rest of those teeth are alive and everything. And it's, they, it's the same thing with the stone arches. When you look at the stone, they have to build somebody to build them, and they put those stones together. They're more narrow down here and wider up here. And then they fit together, and you put the pressure, and it holds it up. And that pressure keeps your teeth lined up like that. And then, so that's another little trick that we use. And we use separators to do that. Now there's another way that we use separators. Like uh, I've had so many people uh, write back, just hundreds of people. I, I sat down this morning and went through, I don't know how many people telling me that. Well, one guy said, well, he needed to move his lower jaw forward some. And that gets the condyle off of the retrodiscal tissue layer so you can move it forward. And it was apparently hitting and pushing on it, this and keeping irritating this joint. And you just need to move the teeth forward slightly. You do it with a separator. I, I had a lecturer one time that didn't even, like I was lecturing and he didn't know how to, how to do this. But you can take the separator and go between every tooth on the lower arch and every tooth on the upper arch. And I guess I, uh, and so when you get the space between all the teeth, the upper and the lower, you close the space by going from the front to the back up here on the lower. Now get this down. On the upper, in other words, you wear class three elastics on an arch wire and a slip. And you close all these spaces you made going back with these teeth. And then you go forward with the upper. And you're using a class three elastic. It's going on from here up to the upper teeth. You strip the upper teeth too. Now the upper teeth come together going this way and the bottom teeth come together going back. And now the contact points, if they were going down in a groove when you started, your bottom jaw will have to be further forward for it to do. And that's the way you can gain space in the arch, in other words, you make the lower jaw come further forward, get off this joint back here if it's hurting. And a lot of people ignore this joint, but don't do it. I mean, you need, people need to be able to do that. And so you can do it that way. The other way is that you can tilt these teeth, you can tilt them back by taking an arch wire let me erase that, and I'm going to put up a D on here. You can take an arch wire where you've got teeth coming up like this, and like this.
Of course, you got roots on all of them. Now, if I take an arch wire that's running through on a bracket like that, when you get right between the teeth and you make a down bend in this, just twist the wire slightly, like what we do, we put the plier in there and twist it so the wire runs out like this, and then it goes down and up, down and up, down and up, down and up, and the this part right here is on this too. So this one here is going like this. I went just a little bit. Now you hook that arch wire in there and it'll lean the bottom teeth back in this direction. You put the same kind of wire on the upper and lean them in the other direction. And now you'll move this point back and you move the point together up here and you actually make the lower jaw come forward to, get, to interdigitate that way. So you can put the tilt in the teeth. I had a patient one time, it was a doctor, a chiropractor, and this was a lady, and her teeth were absolutely perfect. And she had a jaw joint problem, and we had to put, move the upper teeth forward and the lower teeth back, and we did it by tilting that and also by stripping them like that. And that moved their lower jaw far enough to get the condyle off of this retrodiscal tissue. So there's a lot to this that people who ignore, you know, uh, this is too much. Uh, I would take a wire in here just a little bit and you can lower the tooth or raise the tooth a little bit by how you do these. Uh, you can bend that and just mark each tooth and come in and put your flower in, twist it just a little kind of like that. Or you can come in and make it go down the other way, see. How you move the teeth around by just tilting them slightly one way or the other. So there's just a lot of tricks to doing orthodontics that I don't know, some of the schools may teach it, but it seems like there's a lot of people out there that don't know how to do it, even though they are been through uh, schools. And then I, I've taught general dentists and pediatric dentists all my life uh, and uh, try to teach them how to do these things. Now this is the way that we uh, made something to carry the brackets. Used to, I went and bought just a whole bunch of these. I'd have a whole class full of people, and we would give them these little brass things like this, and you bend these ears down like that, and you come out here and bend that bill down, you come and bend this one down, and you can take that. See, we flatten this out right here. Now you spread this, you can spread it further apart. I'm going to bend this one down in this direction and this one in this direction. And that, put it right up there. Bend it down. Put it up there, bend it down. Now you can take that and we, we're, we're bracketing somebody. So we line these up on a, on a magnetic board, a little bit of strips of magnetic strip. <clears throat> and you can get each bracket coming off of there. You pick it up with that, you can put the body material on it, and you can go right to the mouth with it and put it, and you hold your fingers, your fingers on both sides of that when you're putting the body material on the bracket, and you can mash it down in the little eraser side where it goes, and you won't lose it. And now you push it up against the tooth where you want it, and then open this up, and it'll stay there. And now you take a, the explorer like this, and you take this back side of the explorer, put it in this, and it, it fits 
kind of like that, and you can position that bracket, you can twist it back and forth and get it just like you want it, and it's on this, on this too. You're setting it up there. You do that with the Explorer. Now, I don't show a lot of that, but there's a, the bracket and the material on it. Now we take that, and even those ceramic brackets, we put this, and you put your fingers on both sides, just clamp it like this, and it's in between your fingers. And that bracket can't go anywhere. I mean, you can hit it and everything else. Then you carry it right to the mouth. Now you can buy instruments to do this, but you can buy these little uh, brass <laughs> um, deals like this. And I'm sorry to say, I think I used to go buy so many of these to give out. People thought I was smoking marijuana. I made these of the uh, marijuana cigarettes. Uh, now there's the bracket going up on the central, the double bracket the ceramic type and you have to get on the edge where you got the ears to keep it and you push it down and take your explorer and press in here and you got a handle on that and, and this goes to a point and you can steer that thing around and put it exactly where you want it then take your explorer and get the excess off of there if you possibly can now this tooth you have already cleaned it, and then you use your etching material on it, and now you put sealant all over this tooth everywhere, and you bond your bracket on top of your sealant here, and the bracket, if a person does get brushed red around here, well the sealant will stay on there during the whole time of the treatment. Down on this side, you say you rub your sealant off, brushing it, or cleaning it, I hope you do. And it doesn't matter because you keep that clean. But where you can't clean it, the sealant protects the tooth from decalcification. Now that's everybody using brackets of any kind ought to know how to do that. When you get your sealant, I think that you can put that on there. I'm going to erase all of that. Now I'm going to go. Now if you get around to the bicuspids, you can't quite come straight in in the bicuspid. So you can take this plier, and this is soft material, and you can bend it around like that. Now bend the other one around the same way. Now turn the end of this down. Now we can catch the bracket on the side. And this is for placing brackets on bicuspid brackets. And you can sit back there and put this bracket on the bicuspid without coming straight in to the bicuspid. And just press this handle down here, open it up, and you, you can take an explorer or something and press that into the tooth and put it exactly where you want it. And let that harden down. And that's the way it's looking the side. This is coming from this, it turns, and you stick your tooth in here. And you've smeared the body material on here, and you've already got the sealant on the tooth, and that bracket sticks on there, and you have very little problem with decalcification. And there we are, putting it on the bicuspid. I have to pull the gum back to do that. And this is, we would get a little strip of magnetic material, put these brackets out here like that. I mean these bracket holders. These are the bicuspid ones. Now I've got that's a cuspid. It's, and you just stick them on there. Then you reach down and grab one, put the body material on it, Put it in place, bring it back, and you know, just clean them up and sterilize those things. And that's the way we get put brackets on the teeth for years. And you can uh, bracket a case. You get good at it. You can put the brackets on somebody in just a, uh, about 10 or 15 minutes. You can have the brackets 
Rheumatism. This is a, for your hygienist, and I've got had two hygienists working for me, and about uh, seven or eight other ladies that helped them and helped me, and we operated, and we did good orthodontics, and I had a lot of help doing it. And you have to have help if you do a good orthodontics. Somebody comes in with a bracket or wire broken, and you just put them in line and go on, and you can uh, you can cover a lot of material, and you can do excellent orthodontics if you get good people working for you. And each young lady that come in, or we uh, had like uh, women who had their children up and out of school, and they were smart, intelligent women that wanted to do something, and we had uh, ladies like that that worked for us, and. Uh, they could learn how we had a loose leaf notebook for everybody to have a whole page for a certain type of arch wire. And they had to learn how to bend all of these arch wires. And they learned how to. And they worked with one of the women that was a hygienist or would work with me or something and show them how to do that. And then get those women where they could bend these arch wires. And it's perfectly illegal to have somebody else bend them. But I have women that bend so many arch wires. And we taught dentists all around the world. I mean, uh, I taught dentists in every state in the United States. And we'd have some of these young ladies come, or we'd put on a program. And I go into the state meeting in Utah and carried the women, and they showed people how to bend the arch wires and how to bend the wire. So <coughs> train these people to do that. Um, let me see, I don't think I've got anything else. I was going to just go this far, I'm going to quit and come back and I'll pick up uh, tomorrow or something. I'll try to get a, another video made here from this point on where we bond the bright bands on and cement them on and, and stuff like that. So hopefully you will see how you can do orthodontics and do it good. That's what I'm trying to get across. Do it really good, the best you can. And I think of it a person is that you're given a canvas there with this face and you're going to try to make the best looking place out of it you possibly can. And so that's the, the beauty of orthodontics. You can do the, the wonderful things for people and it gives you a real incentive to continue doing this. So I'm going to say goodbye and hopefully you'll join us again. And we need a lot of people to get to subscribe to this channel that we have and I hope you will do that and I'm going to say goodbye and close out. Thank you for watching.